Growing up, I used to lay in bed in the other room and hear men come in and have sex with her. Grew up with a lot of resentment in that. Sean Arvin's mother was a prostitute, and he never knew his real father. When you're in that environment and you're around drugs, there was physical abuse, mental abuse, and actually sexual abuse. The first time I was uh, raped, I was uh, eight years old. As a kid, you, you have no idea emotionally what you're going through. I had no idea what any of that stuff really meant. It's not something that any kid should go through. Because of his mother's lifestyle, Sean was forced to move frequently and grow up fast. Sometimes I would be with people I don't even know. My mom would just take me there and drop me off, and I'd be there for a few weeks. So I learned how to survive. And uh, surviving meant hustling. So by the age of 10, man, I was already out working. After high school, Sean got married and joined the Army. He continued to survive by hustling and working three jobs on the side to provide for his wife and two sons. Just thought life was about work, making money and bigger house, bigger car. But things just didn't work out. A lot of it had to do with just from my past and uh, me not even knowing who I was or not even knowing uh, anything about life. After his divorce and discharge from the Army, Sean dove headfirst into the party scene. Found a lot of love. Man, when you're, when you're buying cocaine and you're buying drinks at a bar and you're hanging out, trust me, there's a lot of people who say they love you, but man, that ain't, that's not real love. He went back to school to get a degree in business and an MBA. He threw himself into a career with equal intensity. Work is, is just as much of a, a false love as heroin addiction, including going to school your whole life, including um, working 80 hours a week. Sean continued to work long hours and finally landed his dream job. I had life whooped by a tail. Um, lived in a five bedroom house, I had three cars. I just thought this is the American dream. One day a new boss came in and he let me go. It all come crashing down on me. and. I just sat there and I just thought about my past and thought about me and just thought about I didn't want to live life anymore and I just thought about my sons and I thought, man, they'd probably be better off if they didn't have a dad who hurt them like I had been hurt my whole life. Sean planned his suicide, but before he could carry it out, a friend who knew he was struggling invited him to visit. Sean flew from his home in Kentucky to Florida. While there, he met a homeless man in a park. We just hung out that day just talking about everything. I mean, you name it, kids, life, you name it. And he said, hey, Sean, and I stopped and just turned around and looked at him and he said, hey, man, I just want you to know God loves you. And I just thought, what? In my mind, I was really thinking, who is this guy to be telling me about God? Over the course of the next 10 days, Sean had a series of similar encounters, each person offering the same message of God's love for him. Before Sean flew back home, his friend gave him a copy of the Big Daddy Weave song, Redeemed. Seems like all I could see was the struggle. And I just remember thinking, man, this is my life. Haunted, I ghostly lived in my when he returned to Kentucky, he saw an ad for a Christian concert in the area. The headliner was Big Daddy Weave. Sean bought tickets to the show. Right after the concert gets over, Jay Weaver, the bass player for Big Daddy Weave, comes off stage and he's just like, God wanted me to come down here and tell you, man, if you'll let go of all that stuff, man, he's going to set you free. And man, he's going to use your life for big things. He's going to do miraculous things and you're going to touch thousands of people with your life if you'll just let go of all that stuff from the past. And man, I was just bawling. I was so overwhelmed with just love. I just felt like for the first time in my life that I was loved. Sean felt compelled to go to church the following morning. Every single word the preacher is talking about is about me. I do remember him saying, 
If anybody wants to come up front, I, and before he could even get that out, I was already in his face. And I was like, let's do this. I'm gonna give myself to Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. That's what I'm gonna do. Wherever he wants to go, whatever he wants to do, wherever he wants me to be, that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna do Jesus the rest of my life. He was later able to forgive his mother and others from his past and leave his drug and work addictions behind. One weekend, I sat at home in a notebook. I just started writing. Every person who had hurt me just prayed and kept saying, God, please forgive me for holding on to this. And God, will you please forgive them? And by the end of Sunday, I felt like I was free. Today, he is married, and he and his wife, Inga, run a community center in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Louisville. Through his ministry, Love City, Sean has a vision to redeem his community one life at a time, just as God has redeemed his. You know, our motto is real simple. Just love God, love people, and let him figure out the rest. If you ever get a dose of Jesus' love, man, God, it's purest love, and you get it, and there's no greater high.